first pick. And if so. you ever wonder why and you want to go into solo queue and you're like, let's leave Mundo open, let's just say don't. Save yourself that okay. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Champion is pretty broken. Yeah, just not worth the experience. Lulu will be the following ban and uh, just waiting on the last one from LCK, which will be Lee Sin. Oh. Ended up against Amazing, who had a yep. killer game yesterday. I was actually uh, backstage with Amazing and Huni as they were just walking for the corridors. And Huni's like, you were feeding so hard yesterday, man. He was like, yeah, I could have gone 20 and 0 despite having an amazing performance. So uh -huh. still taking away the Lee Sin from uh, the ULCS. Yep. We'll see him dip a bit deeper then. Uh, there's always been those rumors of Champion selects problems for amazing and the uh, I mean, that speculation. Was, that was gloriously overstated though. <laughs> he had three bands, the first pick against him, and then he picked the champion that was debatably could work, and then he just lost it. Like, haha, Molly Bear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so All right. final ban, apparently on purpose. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you just decided not to use their final ban. First pick will be Gangplank. Yeah, they want to trade it for uh, two picks here on the second round. What are they prioritizing so highly that they banned Blitzcrank and just, left their third ban open? It's just, it's not about the bans, it's about the message. <laughs> See, like, Korea, we don't need three bans to beat you. Like, I don't need this. I don't need no three bans. Yeah, but I'm just interested in what the first two picks are now up against uh, Gangplank. Gangplank, very good right now. Uh, Essence Reaver, Triforce, all the CDR, still does a bunch of damage. Still suffers from the same problems yep. overall, and Mooney can still lock in. For example, that Riven. Um, to really deal with that overall. Kindred's available, fantastic jungle overall. Usually, when we see Kindred, we do like uh, some more like one-dimensional super tank in the top lane to kind yeah. of balance it out. Malphite would be okay later on against the, uh, the Gangplank 2, could really just ulti him, shut him down immediately. Yeah, which would be odd to see, since Huni rarely does play tanks, yeah. so usually looking for more carries, so maybe that, that would put Kasing on a uh, tank support. And it's gonna be the jungler and uh, AD carry starting off. Typically, don't really see those solo lanes come out very early unless it's a flex, like we saw yesterday as well. So, yeah, yeah just seeing those two come out. Not a lot of surprises either coming from the solo lanes for Team Ice. I mean, Froggen's played Anivia and Brand. Uh, they don't really need to pick either one of those early. He's basically just playing very high damage AoE mages for the mid lane uh, to try and win team fights. And that would pair fairly well with Misfortune. Already a lot of team fight damage. Yeah, we saw Misfortune yesterday as well, and it's strong, but you need the team fight to set up for it. We saw the Malphite and the Alistair paired with it, and when Misfortune was able to channel the ultimate, it was great. We never really got the full channel off and never really saw the full potential of Misfortune. Yeah, MF just needs zoning. Uh, some RTC in the front line, keep people away from her, and she does tremendous amounts of damage. Moosh is pretty strong in Spatch. Callista is weaker due to the item builds, but the, the amount of utility her ultimate brings to the table still makes her a uh, top tier AD carry pick. And surprisingly, Madlife, sticking with the more tanky supports overall, doesn't really seem to be as interested in the mage supports. Braum is a pretty good counter to the Misfortune ultimate. If, oh, yeah. If you can't get back to stop her ultimate channeling, then might as well put yeah, up he... uh, the Unbreakable in front <laughs> oh. of it and block the entire thing. Yeah, he's like three answers. One takes slowly if you stack up the Concussive Woes. The, the ultimate travels at decent speed, but you can kind of predict yeah. when MF's going to uh, launch it. And then obviously, worst case, you just pop the shield. And then worst, worst case, Galista throws you in. So there's four answers already. <laughs> pretty good in lane be. versus her as well. Yeah. So. If you can snag her with a snare. Especially since she uh, doesn't have an innate gap closer in her kit, it, it can actually work for you to just Q flash on top of MF and then auto attack immediately. That's two stacks. If you synergize that with your AD carry, there's three stacks. Usually Misfortune then doesn't have the time to even react and you will always trade uh, flash for flash in, favor, in your favor. So definitely a really good matchup if they have the synergy. Yeah, have to see what uh, EU LCS brings out to react to the reaction from LCK. It's going to be Frog with Nivia once again, but also the Janna to try and mitigate some of that lane aggression. Yep. Coming in already with the Brawl and the Callista. Talk about zone control, there you go. A couple of lockets right there. Nivia, pretty much the queen. Yep. Rise has been banned very heavily throughout this tournament as well. Double kite though, you're on the side for ice. Like, Nivea is really wants to kite a little bit. Janna doesn't really offer too much except for disengage. So, a lot of eyes will be on Huni and they definitely and have dealing the damage, really. They definitely have the range advantage as well on Team Ice right now. Uh, Callista, wow, you know, she's great at uh, snowballing bottom lane. She's fearsome in the 2v2. Not a lot of range. And Gangplank is going to have to get, you know, good chain barrels yeah. to get. Uh, some extension there for the damage. Very kiteable for sure. So waiting on LCK's next two picks. This will highlight really where the Gangplank is going. Maybe Huni will be able to counterpick them as they have left the counterpick for Huni for uh, the EU squad. And it will be the Lissandra Lockin, so another flex coming in. And Rek'Sai for the jungle. 
and the last pick. We'll see where that swarm goes. It will be top lane for Huni. It just depends what he wants to go. Yeah, these are actually two pretty good flex champions because yep. Gangplank, attack damage, uh, Lissandra is obviously AP, so uh, you can make them switch their runes at the last second. Yeah, maybe harder for Huni just a straight up block Riven here. Doesn't have uh, as much of a good matchup against Lissandra as it does a Gangplank in the top lane. So just hovering a zillion for now. Kasing was toying with the idea of playing it before, but isn't going to be, be bringing it today. Yeah, definitely won't be bringing it. Very, very skirmish focused lineup here inside of Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, just once Gangplank hits level 6, he doesn't have to join with Teleport. He can really assist. Like, Lissandra roams anywhere. If the Lista opens up, I mean, so much crowd control effects. Braum has. Two built in with the Kalista face call, that's three. Lissandra has two in her kit as well. You have a knock up, then you have Gangplank ulti. Yeah, and <laughs> the LCK have been the ones really sticking to double teleports as well, holding on to those even after the nerfs. So they're looking at a lot of global pressure here from the LCK side. As the Locky came in there, Huni, you can actually see him right there just screaming <laughs> quit. <laughs> The war cry coming out in Champion Select. I'd be intimidated. I would definitely be scared to go against uh, Quinn. Wait, what's he up? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Quinn is all... Star Stone champ, you know, Quinn. Quinn. Quinn is another champion that can all in and 100% multiple yeah. champions very, very easily. Either Gangplank or Lissandra are pretty easy targets. I mean, all yep. you have to do is utilize the passive uh, and you just weave in your auto attacks uh, in between your spells to get those Harrier marks. And it's so much burst damage. Coming from a solo lane, Quinn's gonna also get to level six earlier and start roaming around the map. So that is definitely a champion that if you get that early kill, if you get that early lead in the game, all lanes have to be worried. Yeah, TP Quinn is so annoying because she hits level <laughs> six bases, just goes down to the bot lane, how and she's halfway, pops her ultimate and just runs into your lane, kills you, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, oops, top lane was missing. Oh yeah, unlucky, unlucky yeah, player. Never lucky. <laughs> also, with the free instant home guards at 20 minutes, yeah. you get up to a thousand move speed on Quinn if you use your ultimate in the base with home guards, and you can get right back out to the middle of the map in no time. It's just not okay, but uh, we'll be loading up into this one soon. Yeah, definitely a good adaptation here by Team Fire. They're putting Lissandra top, so at least they can keep the Quinn at bay when she's charging in. You know, worst, worst case, lock her down with ulti. We have a gap closer on the Lissandra, and then put the Gangplank mid a little safer. Um, can also get out of the Anivia stun to maybe get rid of some damage. Yeah. It's so scary to even try and go gank the Quinn lane, though, because if Amazing is there for a counter gank, oh, yeah. they will get destroyed. Well, here we go. Loading onto the rift. Hashtag Firewind. Hashtag Icewind. LCK up against EU. Both squads currently undefeated as we get into the rift. All right. Both heading towards top side. I like the looks of this. Maybe we'll have an early clash. <laughs> yeah. Now, where are they going? All the way into the top side. Amazing. Uh, Squad's definitely spotted Amazing. And then, likewise, Marin Ooh. has spotted a whole squad from Ice coming down. Because of the Flash Frost it doesn't quite connect. Taken now coming in onto the side. Marin takes the extra damage from Harrier. And now Ice will be invading into this jungle, getting that early vision down. And Fire's still pressuring, but they are currently split. Yeah, rough matchup in bottom though in the first few levels. Bronculus that kind of only can all in. So Reckless and Kasing definitely have the stronger matchup. Uh, maybe that's why they're deep warning to make sure that we think, maybe spot what's going on. Get the favorable 2v2 matchup. Yeah. Quinn doesn't really want to lane swap either. I imagine just wants to get quick to level 6. Have a level advantage over some players on the map. And then use that ultimate to roam. A lot of area is going to be calling for jungle attention <laughs> pretty early on in this <laughs> game actually. Do you know that feel when every lane uh -huh. wants you to gang? Please, gank, gank, where are you? No, no, why aren't you ganking? Yes. <laughs> this is like, why? And they usually say that after you just got a kill in a different lane. Yeah. All right, well, we are going to have opposite sides of the map, uh, starting for both junglers here. So if they do decide to go for the early ganks. All right, they did get the correct lanes. Yeah. The leash on the bottom, so no team coming with extra experience on the bot lane records first. So that should be control for Europe on bot lane. Good harass here from... Uh, Baker. Playing with Corruption Potion. Sounds like a really good idea, honestly, on the Gangplank. Yeah, and he has gone into the uh, Resolve Tree there. He's got the Grass of the Undying, as you can see, with the green particle there. And he has experience against and with the Divya now. <laughs> yes, he, <laughs> he was does. just practicing. It was all a ruse. Yeah. Yeah, he's just reasing a frog in the 1v1 tournament, and Faker will get his revenge. Very annoying to play up against a Gangplank who has the Grasp of the Undying. You just start fighting minions, then bop them with the Q. It's just, it's so difficult to play against. I that was a little easy. 
A lot of damage in return from Froggen. That's the difference though. Froggen knows exactly the range when to pop that Q. A lot of enemies want to get it through uh, and then pop it behind, but then once it starts failing, you kind of let it just simmer out. But Froggen always managed to pop it. He's amazing though. though. I mean, when a 1 HP Anivia or 10% HP Anivia walks up on you in lane, <laughs> yeah. generally the jungler's there, so... Baker learned that in the 1v1 where he aches Froggen twice, but... Been able to. Oh, oh the pure kill. Away by Mara and Skull looking maybe to clean up here. Huni just did level up. three. He'll be heading into the bush. Gets a knock up red buff as well. Flashes into the minion wave. Skull has to back off. Aggressive bolt into the bush as well to maintain vision. Amazing comes in looking to get the extra damage out before he retreats underneath that turret. Skull will get away. Teleport burn to get back to lane here for Marin as they shove in the wave. Doesn't want to miss out on these minions. And Amazing pushing up as well. Huni will be going back. Amazing, no doubt, going to the bottom side of that river. People going back. Lots of corrupting potions to sell off this game. Both top lanes, Marin and Huni went for one, including Faker in the mid lane. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Baker's also damage. getting so much value out of the Grasp of the Undying. He constantly parlays, uh, you know, waiting for the four second cooldown uh, for it to come back up. He's playing incredibly uh, skilled uh, gangplank overall here. The combination of the barrels. Strogan did walk into the first one, but that last one was. Really enjoyable to watch. Baker? Skilled? Yeah. It's like this guy's good at League of Legends or something. Shocking. All right, junglers are going to pass here. Yeah, level four. It's a side score. Skull taking a lot of damage now into Spider Foam. Uh, the execute damage uh, from working over the wall. Rappel comes up, not in range to jump over. Fake was also there. Lower mana, but Amazing was also low himself. So he'll now head into that side of the jungle, see if he can get an exit kill. Frogan taking a bunch of damage, but not getting egg just yet. Amazing. So you have a wall? Down here. Amazing is very low on mana. Yeah. This auto that's a cocoon. Goes into spider form. Gets some damage out. Score's still there farming the raptors. Yeah. Difference between frog and hang on. Oh. Frog did not skill wall uh, on level 4. He actually likes getting 2 points in Q with the additional harass and just the value from that spell. Whereas that when we see expected play, he did skill the wall. Could potentially burn take a faster if he had the wall though. Oh, Teleport now coming in by Faker. Knockup comes out. Amazing forces the flash. Mad life from the bottom lane as well. The roam coming out. Repels comes up. But Amazing already used the flash. Is being chased down. Prey Seeker lands. One more auto attack for the concussive blows to Prog. That's first blood going over to Faker. Stays a bit too long. And there's the early payoff of the double teleport. LCK holding onto that. Faker gets back in time. Fully healed. And yeah. Amazing. Definitely overstaying. Really good roll from Mad Life. Um, should not be allowed to, to get there unannounced and communication issues there. Yeah, leaving Callista alone versus MF Janna means that you're gonna have to forfeit a bunch of CS for that Rome. Yep. Uh, Rome did end up paying off though. Did work because of just the wave manipulation. Callista uh, and Braum actually got the push initially, then the wave bounced back. So Mad Life knew that uh, Prey could farm on the tower safely. There was no punish because it's incredibly hard to dive with a Janna. So Mad Life read that situation beautifully, backed off to the mid lane. Here again, we see why he's uh, picked that Braum into misfortune. Cancelling that double shot. Yeah, bot lane taking some harass. In terms of item, there's Dark Seal now picked up by Froggen with the egg still not popped. So much damage coming in with the Thunder Lord's Decree as well, and the double damage coming in from QE. I love it when he sends out QE. It's, <laughs> so, it's so pretty. They were doing that all the time in the 1v1s yeah. as well. Yeah, most of Navia is like when you're starting to learn a champ, it's like, oh, I can Q. Okay, I hit, it hit E. But the problem is, Gangplank can actually, I think, get rid of the debuff, and then you do less damage. If you send him out at the same time, he has to do it almost frame perfect, so really hard to then dodge the double damage then. Yeah, it, at this level, you might as well just wait for both to land so that you get more health back uh, when you do remove your scurvy. Now, yep, bottom lane now. <laughs> We're going back to the head. <laughs> and Reckless with the shield. We'll be pushing this up to tower, maybe going back shortly. Score has gone back to base as well, gone for skirmishes. Still seeing a bunch of jungles pick that one up. And on the opposite side, his opposite number, amazing picking up. He stalked his blade for the skill. Yeah. Very slow attack animation on Nivea, so you really want to time that well. Get that barrel. We saw it a couple times in the tournament so far, though. Uh, barrel Ooh. denial. Frog Genesis, yeah. Guys, it's not running AD this time. <laughs> it's a lot harder, you know, when you're not running <laughs> AD, AD and attack speed. speed. Yep. Fragile snowflakes. Yep. Well, score has a beat on Amazing as he heads down. Amazing's gonna see him now, looking for the gang to happen. Huni comes out of nowhere there with a level six. Score trying to get away from here. Will be get able to get over the wall, Ooh. survives with a sliver of HP. And now Huni goes back into ultimate form and will be heading back top lane, I guess. Make a visit here <laughs> to Faker. This is a drive by perhaps onto Faker, comes in with the Sky Strike. More autos are coming Got in. Flat. It's the Harrier, the auto, and Huni picks up a kill. Yeah, this is.
is exactly what we were talking about on that Quinn. <laughs> Level six early, boom, there comes the row. You have to be so careful. That's the second time that Amazing has been able to land a cocoon as well on the score to gain map pressure. That just feels so bad. As soon as you get level 6, it's just like, it just feels like there's two junglers and there's no way to get away from those ganks. Well, Faker needed to flash the Q from yep. Looney, but was unable to do so, and then flashed after the auto's already in the air. You can't flash the Quinn auto like you can the Twitch yep. ultimate. Barnes farming top left team. I did, I, did, <laughs> I did say I, I missing pinged. in action. There was a ping. Oh well, no, did he? Because if he did, scores got to be They always did. Got to be oh, really careful. <laughs> okay. Looney. I called it. Not the ultimate, but... We'll be revealing both Score and Marin back on, on the Tremor sense. <laughs> Just kind of hovering around here. Now comes out of Ultimate. Facial path comes across. Marin looking for the lockdown flash into Ultimate. Score trying to get in range for the knockup, but the Volt comes down for the slow. And Score still unable to get in range. Ooh. Trying desperately to do so as Huni retreats underneath the turret, returning damage with the Harrier. Yeah, that was actually really risky of Huni to even try and go for return damage there. He didn't even have any teammates around to capitalize on the return damage. But he was uh, very aware of the cooldowns. He knew of uh, flash was down. The Focus early was. unburrow right there, just outside of range. That was that uh, nerf to Rexile a while ago, where the range was reduced on it. Yep. And no knockup means when he's able to get away with it. Oh. Donate coming over here. Amazing looking to contest. Pricey for land. Uh, I think Amazing may just back up here. Frogan comes down. Frogan might want to throw a Q in Q, there. Yeah. No, not today. Baker did get past level 6 now, so he oh. can actually assist with ultimate. Oh, Marin's very low. Amazing just needs to try and execute a Wolf Auto on top of the Venomous by Will be able to do so. Repel comes up and in range of the minions, so he is able to get out scot free. And Krogan came up, but no assist for him. You Ice Team just did what Elements has failed for an entire season. <laughs> Make Krogan roll. <laughs> Whoa! What have I seen? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it takes Anivia a long time to roam around because she's the slowest champion. What was base move speed? In the game. Yeah. And ultimately, it was only really there for moral support. That was the kill already went down to amazing. Faker getting so much damage down, but so is Frog and doesn't land the flash for us. Faker goes up and not down. A lot of mind games going into uh, these trades. Yeah, it's incredibly hard. It's like a 50 50 because you gotta send out the queue where you think he's gonna juke to. Otherwise, you can just walk out. Generally, you do wanna cut out one of the exit paths out of your ultimate because, I mean, nobody's gonna stand still in that ultimate. So that does remove one potential. Nobody, huh? huh? Gives me an idea for the next step of the mind games. <laughs> <laughs> just stand still and take damage. <laughs> I mean, there's a video of Rush doing that with Karthus just. I'm ready right now, but they're gonna shove the mid lane right here where this amazing rotates over. Again, taking out the first barrel so yep. can't chain reaction. Marn ultimate not quite back up, so. He's getting so much damage <laughs> down. The wall cry from Hootie as well. Picks up the kill as he screams. <laughs> Hootie, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but Hootie's like, ah. it, I think he's trying to pull out the squawk. There. Oh, maybe, yeah. Valley to me. Hootie confirmed. I mean, we do have the new setup in the round where players are facing Roll each other, player? so it's, it's yeah. more the, the mental warfare instead of the actual gameplay here. Teleport coming in on the side. There's a lot going on here. Huni now comes in. He literally just ganked his own lane, and now here to gank the mid lane and jump through as well. All that damage coming out just on the retreat from the score. Oh, all of ICE are actually going to rotate up to mid here. They're going to put a lot of pressure on this mid turret, try and take it down and open up more space for Huni to roam around in. Yeah, and Huni just overall is, is really good at stutter stepping in between his all attacks. He juked the Lissandra Q with the top lane. That avoided him getting sold, and then he could actually chase to get that kill. So it, yeah. while it looked very minor, dodging that Lysander Q from close range is pretty tricky. So it just requires an understanding of your opponent, where he's going to aim, and then just really stutter step in between the other times. Yeah, also the Qs that Huni has been throwing out, very accurate with the blinding assaults thus far. I mean, some people... Oh, here we go, another dive. Oh, I feel like I've seen this one before. There's the Gangplank ultimate coming in, clearing out those minions. Marin dropping low, has the ultimate, uses it on himself, gets the heal as well. Frogan will be tanking up the towers. He still has Egg. He's able to take one more tower shot as they are able to cleanly pick up the kill. Woo, heavily punishing Marin. He is having yep. a very bad day today. Zero, Zero and three so far. But yeah, again, with Quinn, you can guarantee a landing blinding assault if you uh, immediately use it after the E because there's that small knockback, but you lose out on that Harrier damage, which is huge. So you usually want to E, then get your auto attack, and then uh, aim your blinding assault for maximum damage. It's yep. just a bit more difficult to actually land all of those, proc all of the Harriers. I'm just incredibly impressed with the amount of roaming uh, Europe's doing. Because a lot of these teams, or these members of these teams, uh, whether it's Reckless relating to Bevan, Frogger playing in Elements, or 
amazing when expecting it. Their mid laners traditionally in Europe have been very stagnant, not really roaming that much, playing the CS game. Uh, while the attention went to either top or bot lane, respective squads. This time they're playing a completely different style, even though stylistically you would expect a farm heavy mid lane. Yeah, and so far, definitely been working out. Remember, these two teams both undefeated, so uh, we could be seeing these two teams tomorrow as well in the finals. Booney looking to gank into top lane. Once again, it's his own lane. Amarin is having a horrible day, blinding Assault Auto. It just looked way too easy. As soon as you get Ghostblade on Quinn, it is yep. so difficult. The flat armor penetration this early in the game. So much value. Plus, you have that move speed bonus. Nobody can really get away from you either. I mean, yes, Froggen has been doing a lot more roaming than we've seen uh, in general from him, but it's really been amazing in Hooney. Well, Mad Life oh. caught out Prey, throws Mad Life into the fray and score from the top side. The Pinter Mover comes down and Katsing will be on the receiving end. Froggen drops low and the Repel comes up. He'll have to flash over the wall. Nice flash, but into Marin, and they'll get the follow up as Flaker, a Faker. It's not a play cup, but he follows follow through with the <laughs> Yeah, he the was player. there. Picks he was the there on time. Yeah. Hey guys, I'll be in the red you jungle. <laughs> right on time. That was a really solid move by Mad Life, though. Double knock up into reposition, and then he turned the ulti the right way because the initial part, the initial knock up is way longer than the, the second one. So if you double do that on, on two enemies that are standing right next to you, you get so much more value. Yeah, it was definitely a good collapse uh, by the LCK, but also poor choice there by... Oh, oh here we go. Reckless is... Uh, Circling around Faker. Yeah, he has to flash over the wall there. Bullet time comes Ooh. through. Froggen just obliterates score off to the side. Huni taking a bunch of damage, but he still gets a follow up. One stack of Conquest of Blows from the Winter's Bite. And a 1 and 0 over to EU just on the rotation. We've got plenty of room here to work with. Let's see if they go for Dragon or try and get the turret down bottom. Dragon it is. Amazing is not even in the area for the smite, but. They've got vision control as well. Yeah, Dragon has shifted a lot uh, in the current meta game. If we can even call it a meta game, this is the first time we've seen this patch and these guys aren't even playing team together, but priority on Dragon has gone down a lot, so you usually just see it picked up after a skirmish, after a fight, if it's like literally free, like if there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. Otherwise, not too much value on that objective. Since they already had one uh, and got the percentage increase number two uh, that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm all about getting five, and the games end quite fast nowadays, so very difficult to get five. Likewise with the Herald, if you pick up a kill, pick up a skirmish, head for that one. Yeah. Now, that last collapse there by LCK in their jungle that earned them that kill uh, was at the cost of the teleport of Marin. So now they have to be really worried, play defensively, put up defensive wards. They've lost most of their outer turrets already, so it's going to be hard to hide from Hooney. Yeah, opening up the map is exactly what Quinn wants. Now he can just push the wave and then just disappear. You don't know if he's gonna base, go straight down the bottom, move into the river, dodge the wards potentially. So many places to be made, and Marin, he can't even 1v1 anymore. So it's very predictable for the other side of <laughs> the squad that Marin is just probably likely rolling on them. Don't feel like Marin really ever could 1v1 in this game. Having a rough time. He's got the distortion upgrade really early again, though. So he's all about that team play. Yeah, we'll be able to get that one for the flash, but already teleported a little earlier. And something that did change Janna as a pick, as we see Huni scouting for some more um, free kills here, is that the Frost Queen's claim is just so much better in this patch. And it actually gives Janna some offense. Like we were saying, champs like that just kind of only peel, only disengage. But with the Frost Queen, she can facilitate a lot of picks, especially when Huni's roaming around. Yep, with Huni down bottom side, LCK have to give up their own jungle here on the red side. Give up a lot of their wards as well. Ghost played by Hoodie. Plays out the ward real fast while uh, Fai was trying to collapse there. Picks him up on the radar from Rek'Sai. Marin looking for the flank coming down the river, but doesn't really want to meet Hoonie one on one right now. Yeah, kind of. The problem is that what you need to deal with Hoonie is a flash ult from Marin. But if he does that, then he's going to get burned down immediately because there's so many other damage sources on Team Ice uh, with Froggen already. Stacking up his Rod of Ages and Reckless having a easy time down bottom. Yeah, at this point, it, it might be worth just trading Mad Life with his shield against Huni, soaking up the damage, getting him because of lows, stunning him, and then trying to burst him down. Yeah. While maybe Marin just ports himself into the backline self ults uh, and base that way. That seems like the only way, really, for LCK to take down Huni. Yeah, they're definitely going to need a uh, good barrel, chain barrel yeah. uh, explosion there from Baker. We have seen games single-handedly won by Gangplank Barrel Explosions on five members of the enemy team. Let's look like Faker's not going for, hang on, the score. 
Oh, oh, oh. Binding Assault, so much damage. Has the flash, actually, as he aggroes Grump on the way out. Bretus now comes in. All that time comes across, Madlife shielding his ally. Marin drops low, there's the ultimate, locking down Huni underneath the tower, but Kasing healing is enough to keep him alive. And a one and zero, Marin actually fell as he tried to retreat. Yep, went down to the burn there, and that's gonna mean EU closed the loop here. Baker doing his best to clear the waves as uh, Prey down bottom is actually getting teleported on as he starts his recall. Oh, he canceled the recall! Prey oh, canceled oh. his recall, he's toast! Well, he's going upwards, but Huni is always going to outrun him. And oh! oh. oh. I think it's so, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He actually comes into the fight, hits him with the auto, shoots him down. Huni falls, and it was all an elaborate bait. Yes, Marin with the <laughs> distortion boots, his teleport does count. That and was that's a punishment for not going with the guaranteed vault into Blinding Assault. He wanted to get the full damage. Oh, it was Faker, excuse me. <laughs> wow, I just want to give credit just to Baron. Like, Baron, like, what a fantastic Baron, play right there. He <laughs> cheered on Faker, told Faker to teleport. <laughs> Faker teleported to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, really fantastic flash there from Prey overall. Let's watch that again. Yeah, so he wants to get uh, vault into Let's go Barrier Mark. Benny misses. Yeah. Waste the flash. <laughs> Amazing was there as well, didn't get back to Cocoon. May have been able to pick up a one for one. Oh, Marin. Doesn't have all. I really, I really <laughs> keep wanting to give him credit for stuff. <laughs> Feel bad, 0 and 5. Yeah. I actually want to get to the Baker's build, but every time I want to talk about it, something happens. It doesn't look like he's going SSG over IH because I feel like he would be over capping on CDR because yeah. he went for CDR boots. Maybe he just needed a... No, that's, he's definitely going in, uh, into I edge second. Oh, All right, there it is. Insta pop gets his revenge coming in. Faker has to flash through that wall. Mad Life score still backing him up. The nice one for zero. And how the positioning in mid lane should be able to pressure the turret here. I think we saw I edge second. This is your third, but it feels like a waste with all this CDR now. I just go for double I edge still. I think, yeah, I think he's just going with the old standard. And this mid turret. Come down real fast. Nice pick up another tower in the mid lane. And we're going to Kasing and Huni going back to the top sides of the map. I mean, it looks very convincing, but the gold, even though there's a uh, pretty big turret advantage, is only 2,600 gold. So, like, if the turrets equalize, this game is bang on even. So, yeah. Kinda I'm wondering where it's coming from. It's more farm of Faker. Less than bot lane. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things. You know, while the games are quicker uh, in preseason, there are uh, ways to get back in it that are still really strong. Like, Huni had a very large kill streak, and giving up that kill bottom yep. gave a lot of gold back to the entire LCK team uh, as a global bonus, and he still has a streak going here uh, at rank two, so if they kill him again, yep. he'll still reap more rewards. I think we're finally figuring out the more elaborate parts of this metagame. You dedicate one guy as a feeder, build up, their, <laughs> build up their streak, yeah. Feed the cow. Uh huh. And then you slaughter it. It's sometimes it's really hard to go kill that cow now though, because you just <laughs> the cow bites back, man. You, yes. It's like Diablo 2 cow level status. It's gonna be Dragon once again. Team Ice. Faker over the wall. Maybe it's a chance of barrels together and potentially pick this one up. Oh, oh that parlay. Not quite. What Faker really wants there. His uh, dragon is gonna be going over. Winters by a couple shots in the dark. Not gonna be going over to LCK today. Third one of the game to EU. Five is uh, definitely on the agenda. <laughs> There's the Void Rush. Huni goes in, Huni goes out. Huni goes further in. Yeah, I mean, who has got backup, so. Yeah, he's good to go. Actually, he's gonna take on the Grom for now. Score, wall ward over the wall. And that's the spike, so maybe I'll take this one away. Actually resets, blue buff taken out by Team Ice. Bad luck, you slashed and ultimate. Uh, there, down in the bottom right of your screen. Didn't quite see it. No flashes burn on Team uh, Ice though, however. Plus, you know, LCK, they were able to hold on to a bunch of their globals there. They just used their Rek'Sai ultimate, which is the cheapest, sort of easiest one to use uh, to dissuade Huni from going for one of those solo kills. They still have the double teleport from Faker and Marn, plus Faker's ultimate. A lot of pressure around this Baron area right now. Is there a ward? Yeah, they haven't found the ward, the blue ward in the pit. I haven't chosen to clear it, so... Again, with the new blue trinket, Baron baiting is not impossible, so you really want to make picks. Oh, like, just like this in the mid lane, Huni leading the charge. Rex is trying to get in range of Mad Life, a double tap. It's coming down, last auto, takes him out. 
Yeah, no flash, no ulti, and no face call available for Mad Lash. Mark well, trying to split push with this pathetic Massage build with almost no damage. Oh, it takes him so long to clear a wave. And with that, it looks like EU LCS are going to at least bait Baron. Yeah, one more time. And they've got a fantastic champion, though, if you have the vision control, because it's so hard to patient her, let alone she can really cut off the path of the wall right here. Oh, everyone comes oh. out the wall into the bullet time. Huni off to the side as well. The Wombo combo. And Prey will be backing off 2 and 0. Marinoni now comes into the fight. And he was the one with the blue trinkets. So There's no way for LCK to have seen that coming. Call out a wall bank. <laughs> Turn what he used, right? Sure, sounds good. Marin oh. caught out. That's the self ult there. Mad Life, another ult used onto Frog and that will be backing up. Ren comes through, retreating to the safety of Kasing. Goes into the egg, only goes into the egg. And the Baron goes over to EU. Let's see if they can. Uh, Frog can by himself now. Nope. All right, so EU LCS, time to get that Baron split pushing underway here, because nobody can go one versus one ver uh, with Huni. There have to be uh, some globals coming up. Triple there, knock off from Kasing, uh, Tornado, by the way, that he channeled, then the wall comes in. Even though Score flashes, he can't really get uh, Dale flashes oh. into the wall, and then beautiful ultimate overall from Rekki. Even Huni coming in with the uh, Assault right there is able to keep Prey in his Fortune ultimate for a bit longer, yeah. for a couple extra ticks, and they take him out as well. Definitely underrated that that massive knockup uh, from the Sinks Tornado really set up that play. Scroll being spotted here, Mad Life and the rest of Fire are behind Huni now rowing in from the top lane. Now's the time for Fire to try and look for an initiate while Huni just have his teleport and he is teleporting down into this fight. Bullet time, there's so much damage and Mad Life will bring up the Unbreakable and try and block some of it, but so much of that channel got, uh, went down onto Fire. Yeah. And I did interrupt a little bit, but again, a good tornado blocking the very telegraph uh, movement from Spore there. No communication, probably kind of walled off his own team there, but just the sheer amount of damage coming out of Reckless alone. And it's not looking too bright right now for LCK. Got Lane Siege coming in, the barrels do not connect. Double item Faker right now. Got even more crit. The bottom tower is taking so much punishment. Marin also gets chunked from long range. This tower is gonna fall real fast if I don't do anything about it. It already goes down. And Ice looking for the engage. Score taking a bunch of damage in from Huni. And the bottom inhibitor is gone, and Ice will just turn tail. Kind of power to recall. Let's watch him come out of base. Come on, observers. He's so fast. Ah, here we go. <laughs> oh, that was. 1200, almost 1300 moves straight out of the base. He can get to top lane as fast as the rest of the team could rotate over if he wanted to. Like Stops off in mid for some minions, though. Yeah, it's like five seconds to go from base to mid lane. I think Frogger was trying to do the minor knockback on the wall there. Oh, yeah, right yeah, at yeah. the time as Osana wanted to press E there to maybe cancel that gap closer. Oh. Very huge possibility of that working. Well, who needs oh, who need? Whoa! and jumps into the battle. He has a lead behind it, but the shutdown comes, comes in for Faker. Score does get caught out, though, and Amazing looking for the kill here with the rest of the team. Froggen will supply the damage. And Amazing, let's take a bit of damage from Faker there on the way out. Kasing will be taking out this one. And That's maybe the only Frog. problem with Quinn, is once you get to that point where you have so much damage and so much move speed, you begin to feel like a god and you can take out anyone. Reckless is going to even the odds there with that ultimate chunking down everyone, though. Yeah, Rappel comes up. Amazing. Looking for an execute here. Mad Light dropping low. We'll be able to get him with the Venom Spike. Three for one. And after all of that, Marin also taken out after his ultimate. Only Faker alive to defend this onslaught in from Ice. That's going to be another inhibitor turret. That's going to be another inhibitor. Quality predictions here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think those minions are going down. What, what do you got for us, Grepo? <laughs> yeah. That range creep is gonna die. Reckless Victor though. Well, oh, Ice heading into the jungle, the bottom side. Blue Trinket comes out. Let's take a look at that fight one more time. Watch how Mad Life's blocking all damage and Prey pulls him out. Yeah. Actually, did he's more damage. Well, Prey actually was also sidestepping oh, with yeah. Martial Pose outside of the area that was being blocked by Mad Life. So he took damage the entire time. Yeah. Not much was actually getting blocked by that Unbreakable. Well, Pudi, round two. It's down to Faker, then backs off. Teleport. But a teleport coming in from Mara, and he has his ultimate. Doesn't have the flash, oh. though. Sidestep, but he should be dead. Two rides here as Faker picks up yet another kill. 5 2 and 0. That's something that we did see from Huni at Worlds as well. Uh, getting a little bit overconfident when he got super fed on a split pusher. I mean, it is All Star, so let's just assume that he knows that he's playing a little bit over eager. I'm just saying, we've seen the same things in play style from him at All Stars and in competitive at Worlds. Yep. <laughs> Huni trends. Score over the wall. 
Mad Life trying to get in there. That's a lot of damage going from the bullet time, though. Plus the make of rain. Skull will have to back off. He's way too low to continue fighting. Has the Void Rush if he wants to get back into the fight as well. Marin, uh, 27 minutes. He's, he's able to take the top He's throw. also got a full item completed now. Oh, Power Spike, boys. He went for the... The Zonias, which is actually one of the most expensive yep. AB items now with huge cost increases. And he's had a couple of Zonias in this, this game already where there just wasn't that much utility from it. And worse, oh. worse for wear is just whenever, as we see in the picture, in picture uh, Huni coming out there in top speed, but Marin will just get cancelled uh, by Kasing. Kasing picked up a Mikhail's Crucible, so his ultimate is just entirely null and void, so it may just be cast better on himself rather than a opposing member. Yeah. That, uh, not much damage coming out of that Lissandra build. Rod of Ages, uh, currently right now, is extremely strong for her. But, uh, going with an old-style build, I don't think Marin's played too much of the three season. Phantom mm, Dance also picked up by Faker in the mid lane. Also going for defensive stats now, so he is doing a lot of damage. Maybe not enough to uh, make up for Marin's lack of, but... Uh, Frogger now coming into the top side. Yeah, Everyone flying. congregating around here, but those two inhibs are still down, and there was a large mini wave on the bot side. Five just have to back off. They have to concede this turret, or they just lose Nexus turrets. Yeah, the setup here from EU just gonna be smart. Um, side tornadoes from Kasing, Frogger walking up with zone control on the wall. Even if Marin goes in, the backup will get caught. Madlife kind of has to play in the front to deny damage. You know, two people defending the base. You gotta go for dive here. Yep, tower will be going down. Ice continues the push. There's only one inhibitor turret remaining. And the, bot, uh, the bottom wave is funneling in. The mid lane is a little further out. So maybe five mountain defense here, but pretty much do or die. There comes the Gangplank ultimate, but no follow up. Great glacial storm into Frog and just couldn't really aggress that. That is going to still be down when Baron spawns as well. So the EUSS don't have to overextend here. They've already got two inhibitors on the bottom side. They can easily just buy their time. Ward up the blue side jungle here, bait Baron once again, or even just burn it down as soon as it spawns because LCK are going to have a really difficult time getting out there to defend it. Frogan just will be able to wall up the passage, wall loss for five seconds. It's rank three right now, it's big enough to block any of those entrances. Yeah, and with an AD carry top and uh, Reckless as fed as he is, they can burn down Baron really quickly. Yup. Like, a bit of damage there, Sentinel has revealed them up, but. It's all about just waiting for the Baron here. LCK are pushing out of the base to try and contest. Yeah, generally, when you if you want to beat a kite composition like this with, with multiple layers of disengage, you need to flank. But Marin right now is just not in the position. Uh, no more on the map, nor can he generate the split push pressure to even get into it. Uh oh. Bad life will jump into the wall <laughs> and out of the wall. Yeah. yeah, it's such a tough position. Because of the waves pushing in as well, and stuff is always on wave duty, there is no flanking cross potential for LCK. And if you're knocking on the front door against this lineup, you, you will just, yeah, you'll get denied. And Baron is live and looks like he's going to be starting Ghost Blade, popped even by Huni. Both his AD carries are absolutely crushing Baron. That'll be down. The wall comes up. Literally, Fire couldn't do anything there. Yep. EU LCS looking to stay undefeated here at All Stars. Yeah, looking real strong. Mid lane is going to be pushed up by Huni. He could even go bot lane right now. Just pressure every single lane with those Baron up minions. Bottom inhibitor has respawned. Mid lane has not. And Huni is back down there and he's going to take out that inhibitor. Yeah. Unless Huni. We use the overextend here. Uh, this game should end in this game. Ooh, Prey also tagged by the Flash Frost. Top turret goes down. All of the inhibitor turrets are out. They have to go for the engage. Marin gets the ultimate down, but doesn't pick up a kill. Mad Life on the front line. So is Gore. Gets the two knockups. Mahuni is just taking the bait. And Score able to get on top of Amazing, but not before he just gets taken out. That's a lot of damage going into the back line of Ice, though, as the Cannon Barrage comes down. Mad Life backing up to base. Faker just dodging all of the skill shots, trying to get out of range of this slow field. That was an instant Mikhail's Crucible there from Kasim. Well, he, he has Quicksilver Sash as well. <laughs> so, okay, there are two, there are two answers. Both of them were used, so... That was an instant Quicksilver <laughs> Sash and <laughs> <in> Reckless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Latanja, that's one of the problems with the champion now. Uh, Very telegraph. Towards the, yeah, late stages of the game when the enemy carries start getting so many answers for the ultimate. Difficult to make much happen. Right, He's got a lot of cooldown reduction. Oh, for that one to come back up. <laughs> Not out of HP, though. Well, 7 to 17 has been a bunch of kills in this game. 10,000 gold lead, exactly. That's not typical. Oh, no! Oh, Marin. He's already dead! 1v1. <laughs> He's already dead! Hooney 
Takes up yet another kill. Oh, score. Yeah. Like right, lunch. Follow up perhaps. Reckless in the mid lane. Maybe burnt out here, but Breakers oh, oh, oh. and so does Mad Life. And Ref is pretty much the only guy who needs to do the damage there. Huni flashes over the wall. He wants the glory. He wants the kill. Right, he picks Baker, up. Sniper Baker side. One. Highlight reel. Six skills on him out of the seven. The 1v5. Can he make it happen? Baker. Sitting on the base. Baker! Baker! Baker. He's six and two right now. He's almost there. Not quite. Oh, chunks down Frog. And with the help of the laser, perhaps, may be able to get his gate down. All right. Ice doesn't actually win unless they... Oh, they oh, go! Oh, they get the Nexus. There we go. EU picking up the win up against LCK, looking incredibly dominant and undefeated. 3-0 right now. And North America welcoming their down. They're trying out the chant. See how we like it. Yeah. <laughs>